You'll have to excuse my French. I think they're called truche tiles. Or is it truche? 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 I don't know. According to Wikipedia, first documented by Sébastien Truche, who came up with this idea that these simple patterns, if you arrange them in a grid, no matter in what orientation you arrange them, they would always result in nicely connected patterns. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we built this. And please always keep in mind your privilege. Uh, think of poor Sebastian, who would always have to draw these things by hand. So whenever he would change anything like this, he would start over with pen and paper. I like the idea of thinking that Sebastian might have liked VVV quite a bit. So Sebastian, this is for you. I'm creating a new document and the first thing we will do is create the tile that we then will replicate in a grid. The tile itself will be a square thing and if you remember we want a quarter circle in this corner and another quarter circle in this corner. We will use the round rect node for that because that allows us to morph between circles and rectangles which is nice. We will need two of them arranged so that one has its center here and the other one has its center here and for that we're using the circle spread uh, set to two and then surround the round rect with a for each. Let's say for each of the two points that the circle spread generates, we draw a round rectangle at that position and then use a group spectral to collect the layers and there we go into the renderer. Now we have two of them aligned side by side but what we need is to put them in the corners. So what we want is the angle, the phase that we set here is one eighth, and then the size, the, the width of the circle spread, which is the diameter of the circle, it, it will be 2.82, which is twice the square root of 2. Think about it, the center is zero, one um, unit is here, one unit is here, so this diagonal, the, the radius, is one square plus one square is two, and the square root out of that is the radius taken twice is 2.82. And the size of the two elements we draw should be two. Now you see as I change the radius, I can morph between a circle and a square already. And let's uh, use the stroke node here so that we only see the outline of these elements. Now, yeah. So we have the tile. Next we will want to arrange that tile in a grid. So for that we're using another renderer. Make that one bigger. And in that renderer we want to draw the other tile. So we're using the draw image node here. And to get an image out of these layers, here we are using the renderer off screen. So this is exactly as the normal renderer, only it returns an image that we can now connect here. Now you see the, the aspect of this image is a bit weird because the defaults are set like this here. Really, we can set it to 128 because we will have many smaller tiles. Okay, so we have one tile. Now we want many in a grid. So for that, we're using the grid points node. Uh, 
this gives us a spread of points given a resolution which we can set to 10 by 10 let's say and a size and then we say we get a hundred points we say for each of the points we want to draw an image so we create a for each node and say for each of the points we want to now move in the draw image draw the image and again collect all the layers with a group spectral to draw them in the renderer now we have a lot of them and they are very big shall we make them smaller to see them all and already we see a nice pattern uh, but first let's uh, stretch them out to fill the whole renderer so we just increase the size of the grid points dimensions to two to exactly fill the renderer now you see the, the corner um, tiles are kind of cut off and this is because we have to enable the centered pin on the grid points so now they're centered inside of the given dimensions now the question is what's the exact size of the elements here let's instead of just trying this we just compute the number and we're using the division node here that's uh, the size divided by the number of elements that gives us the size in both dimensions now they are kind of uh, exactly filling the renderer but here is a thing I want to point you to and I'm just scaling this so that we can better see it uh, now these tiles are touching each other but there is this uh, gray line between them and this is due to anti-aliasing so the individual tiles are touching them but each of the tiles has a smooth corner so they're both blending out and that's why we see this line here we can get rid of that by setting the blend mode to additive and this is the default it's set to plus and now the, the seams are gone as you can see I can now make this thinner again now we are nearly there only we need to apply a random orientation to each of the tiles so we want to rotate them and for this we are using a transform SRT skier here and this one has a rotate pin but you see as I rotate I now rotate the whole structure and this is because the position is set up here and then only the rotation is applied so I will move the position translation of the tiles to the translation on the transform SRT um, and also I will move the size here and now I will reset that size here so now again fitting perfectly and the rotation works as intended now the question is how can we apply a random orientation to each of the tiles so each tile can be as it's square let's say in four different orientations angles are given in uh, values between 0 and 1 so we can easily use the linear spread to create the four possible angles then we get slice one of the angles for each tile now it looks like they are suddenly not touching anymore but let's see what's going on here if I give the background of the tile a bit of color here you see that they are actually now in the default position they are already rotated so we need to adjust that and the exact value again we have to enter here is one eighth of a circle so now they are perfectly aligned again and we can switch between the different orientations 
Now really we only need a random node here that chooses us a random index between 1 and 4. But also it shouldn't do that all the time, but only when triggered. So we create a cache region and move the random in here. So it's only executed when we trigger its input. The force input, creating a bang for that. And now as I bang that, I get a random index for each of the slices, which leads to a random angle for each of the slices. Now, as I press the button here, I want the angle not to be applied immediately, but with a bit of a damping animation. So I'm using a damper here set to two. And now the tiles move smoothly. I better take the background color out again. And now we have what we wanted already. From here you can play a bit with the tiles. You can make them square or round. You can change the stroke width a bit and also give the stroke a bit of a halo. We're using a set mask filter for that which goes into the stroke and then use a blur mask filter that attaches here when we set that to some value and apply it as solid and you see we have this nice blur here. Now this would already be it for this tutorial if it hadn't a hidden bonus track. In this I want to try to apply a slightly different pattern for each of the tiles. So I want to move the creation of the tile inside of the loop. So really these nodes here are responsible for drawing the tile. So I'm just moving them in here. Um, now we lose the pattern here because the renderer got disconnected, but we don't need that for now. And we say we want to create a random radius for the round rack. So it's the radius is a 2D vector, so we are choosing two random spread 2D. And we know from the grid points we have a hundred tiles. So we're creating a hundred different values here. And then get rid of the radius and use that spread spliced up to set the radius for each of the elements. Now I'm choosing a bit of thinner elements and increase the value of the radius here. And you see already how the tiles now have much more variation in their radius. They're all kind of different, but still sticking together on the edges. We still get a continuous line. But this is only to show that Truchet tilings don't have to consist of all the same tiles. They only need to share the same uh, borders, pixels at the borders. And you can easily draw an individual pattern for each tile that you're drawing. As a final tip, if you want more inspiration on this and playing a bit more with it, just go to your favorite search engine and look for Truchet tilings.